Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on this makeup look. This is a makeup that I wear all the time. You guys have probably seen it a million times in my videos. It's very, very simple with the eyeshadow and stuff like that. So I took a lot of time to go really in depth with this tutorial. I went really in depth on all of my face makeup, why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm using, why I love it. Now I'm not saying that this makeup look is simple by any means. It's definitely very like glamorous, very highlighted, very like glowy looking, which I've been loving so much lately. It's just simple in the way that the eyeshadow is easy. So yeah, anyways, if you aren't already then please subscribe to my channel and if you want to know how I got this makeup look then just keep watching. Okay, so my eyebrows are already done and I filled them in with the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil and then I primed my eyelids with the MAC Soft Over Paint Pot. I don't have that up here with me but I just primed them with the Soft Over Paint Pot and then set them with a skin colored eyeshadow. So what I've been doing for my eyeshadow, it's so easy you guys. I literally do one thing and I use the MAC Give Me Sun Bronzer. If you don't have MAC Give Me Sun, this shade is called Early Bird. This is almost exactly the same color as this and when I'm not using this I'll just go in with this eyeshadow instead. But just for the sake of this video since this is what I've been doing mostly I'm just gonna take some of this bronzer on a Morphe E28 brush. I tap off the extra and then I literally just go in and very lightly just dust this all over my crease area. So as you can see, I just make it super blown out. I'm not doing anything precise at all. It's just like a wash of color, basically. I just like to do this just to create a little bit more dimension in my eye, and it's kind of just like natural contouring, but I love using this because it's very warm tone. It has kind of like an orangey undertone. I'm just doing the same thing in the other eye. Okay, so that's literally it for the eyeshadow. That's all I do. It's so, so easy. Now I'm gonna go into my eyeliner and I'm doing a winged liner because I always do a winged liner. I'm using the Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in the shade Black is Black. This is my all-time favorite gel eyeliner. It's so black and it doesn't turn like gray after a while and it's just a really nice consistency and it doesn't dry quick at all. What I'm going to do is take a little bit on my brush and I use this Sigma E06 brush. This is also my favorite brush for doing winged liner. It's just super precise so it makes your job really easy. Okay, and then once I have my wings on, I'm going with my liquid eyeliner and I'm using the Sephora Long Lasting Liquid Eyeliner. I'm just going to draw the line that goes on top of my eyelid with this. Okay, now that my winged liner is done, I'm going to move on to the face because I don't usually like doing my face makeup before I do my eyelashes. Just in case any like powder gets on them, it's kind of hard to get it off. So to prime my face, I'm using the Kenan Austin Prime and Protect Mattifying Primer. You guys, I love this so much. I picked this up and I showed it in my last Sephora haul and I'm literally obsessed with it. I use it every single day. I haven't even touched another primer since I started using this. I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit on the pricier side, for especially for a primer, but in my opinion, I I think it's so worth it. I have very oily skin and this is definitely the only primer that I think that I've ever tried that actually controls my oil. When I put this primer on, I can wear almost any foundation and my oil will not peek through. It's just crazy. I don't know what's in it. It also makes my skin really, really smooth. And I don't know if you guys could tell on camera, but it has a little bit of a tint to it. So when it does go out of the skin, it's a little bit like tannish. And it really, really evens out your skin tone. It just makes it look so soft. I would compare this to feeling like the Dr. Brandt Pores Normal Primer, if you guys have ever tried that. It feels exactly like that on the skin. So if you have oily skin like I do, especially really oily skin, I would highly, highly recommend this. I think it is like a game changer for people with oily skin. So anyways, moving on to my foundation now. I'm using my other favorite foundation. This is the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. I use the shade 1.15. It's so weird and I said this in my last video that I have oily skin so it's weird that I like a hydrating foundation because normally hydrating foundations don't work on people that have oily skin but this foundation just works wonders. It looks amazing on the skin. This is definitely one of the only foundations that I've ever tried that I can wear for like 10 plus hours hours and not have any oil on my face. I'm going to blend this out with my damn beauty sponge. This is the beauty sponge from Morphe and I absolutely love it. It's really, really big so I feel like it just blends out the foundation really fast. I 
really hope you guys can see on camera how this makes my skin look. It just gives us such a natural looking finish. It just looks so hydrated and youthful and I just am obsessed with it. I love the way that it makes my skin look and feel. Before I put my concealer on, I'm going to cream contour a little bit and I'm using the Anastasia Stick Foundation in the shade Fawn. These work so good for cream contouring. They blend out so easily and they're just like the perfect shades. I just took a little bit on the tip of my brush and this is a BH Cosmetics 138 brush and then I just directly go into the holes of my cheekbones. So when I'm doing this, I'm going in circular motions, moving my brush upwards because you don't want to just sit there and do like a straight line because your cheekbones are naturally curved and you don't want it to make it look like it's just a line. You really want to create the illusion that it's an actual shadow from your cheekbones. So that's why I'm curving it upwards. So I'm putting the most pressure right here, right in this line where the hollow of my cheekbone is. And then I'm circling upwards just to create like that very rounded and lifted effect rather than just going in and doing a straight line right here. And then I'm just taking a little bit more and putting that on my hairline just to even everything out because I don't want my cheekbones to start looking too dark and too contoured and then have nothing on my hairline to even anything out. I'm also going to take a little bit more and slim out my forehead. So how I do that is I just start on the sides and I just kind of work that inwards. I don't take it anywhere past right here like about where the arches of my eyebrows are. And I just kind of work that inward so that it's darker out here. And that's going to give the effect of having a much narrower forehead. I don't think my forehead is like big or anything. I just like doing this because I like it when my face looks like it has more dimension to it. So that's why I do this. Okay, and then now for my concealer, I'm using my all-time favorite. I use this in every single video, and I kind of feel bad, but it's the Tarte Shape Kit Concealer. I use the shade Light Medium Honey. I used to use the shade Light, but that one has more of like a pinky undertone to it. This one has more of a honey, more of like a yellow undertone to it, and I feel like it just looks a lot better on my skin tone. So I'm just doing little dots underneath my eyes, and then I kind of take it down to like a triangle shape where the apples of my cheeks are because I don't want to have only highlighted under eyes right here. I want to take that in to the whole cheek area. Because when the light hits your face, it's not only lighting up the under eyes, it's lighting up this whole center of your face. And so we want to bring that forward and make it look like the light is naturally hitting your face and making it look lighter. I'm also taking that down the center of my nose and then just a little bit on my chin. And then I also like to do a little bit underneath the corners of my mouth just to kind of give the illusion of them being lifted a little bit more. And then just a little bit on my cupid's bow. So as you can see, I'm just doing the whole center of the face to bring that forward and just give a little bit more dimension to my skin. And I'm blending that out again with that same damp beauty sponge. And then I also always do my under eyes last because the longer the concealer sits on an area of the skin, the not the harder it's going to be to blend out, but the more coverage is going to be there. And I always like the most coverage to be underneath my eyes. So I always wait to blend out my under eyes till I'm done with everything else because I always want the most coverage under here. If you need more coverage on your forehead or even on your nose, like if you like to cream contour your nose, if you just do a line of concealer down the middle of your nose and then leave it there for like five minutes, when you blend it out, there's going to be like a perfect line and it's going to make your job so much easier for contouring your nose. So just a little trick if you need more coverage in any other area. This is a great trick to use. So now to set all that concealer, I'm using the Cover Effects Perfect Setting Powder in the shade Light. This is my all-time favorite setting powder. It's beautiful. It just looks so amazing on the skin, and it's really good if you have dry under eyes, which I do have. There's also no talc in it, which the Laura Mercier powder does have in it. So it's not going to flash back in photos, and it's not going to make it look really cakey or powdery in your eyes. And I don't know. It's just amazing. So if you guys haven't tried this, I definitely would give it a try. So what I do is I just pour a little bit into the cap of it, and then I go directly in with my sponge and just pick a little bit up usually about that much it's kind of actually a lot but that's okay so I don't bake I just set it with the sponge so I just press it on and then I just really take my time to work that powder into the skin and I feel like it just makes your skin look so soft when you do this I always set my whole face just because I am really oily and if I don't set anything that's like liquid or cream on my face, it will move around on me. So I always have to set everywhere on my face. Just kind of work that into the skin all over where I put the concealer. And this is really good also for keeping your makeup on for a long time. It really helps to control my oil. It helps to keep my makeup on. I don't know. I just, I can't imagine 
setting my makeup without doing this anymore. Like that's how much it's made a difference in my makeup routine. <laughs> and then since I haven't set the lower half of my face where I like did my contour and stuff, I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of concealer on just this concealer brush. And then I'm just gonna clean up the bottom of my contour. And then I'll take my sponge and blend that out. And then I'm taking my Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Kit and I'm using this shade right here. As you guys can see, I love this palette. It's my favorite contouring palette. So I'm just taking a little bit out of this, tapping off the extra because I don't want to go in with too much product at first. Otherwise, it'll be really hard to blend out if you put too much on. I'm just holding the brush kind of like a pencil and then very, very lightly going right over top of where I put that cream contour. And again, I'm working in circular motions, just like how I did with the cream contour, because again, you want it to look like a real shadow on your face. And then I also don't bring that any farther past about the arch of my eyebrow. So I stop everything right here, because if you bring it too far down, then it is gonna start to look, like you don't wanna drag your face down, you wanna keep it up higher so that your face looks more lifted. I'm just doing the same thing over here. And then also setting the cream contour that I put on my hairline. So anything that was cream or liquid is getting set by powder. Just let nothing moves around on me all day. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more of that setting powder on my damp sponge. And then set that right underneath my contour line. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that sit there and bake for like five to 10 minutes. So while I'm letting that sit, I'm gonna work on my lower lash line. And the first shade that I'm using is this dark brown one right here. I forgot the name of this. Mocha by Makeup Geek. And I'm gonna tight line my lower lash line. And then I'm taking this shade right here. This is called Blazing by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And then I'm just gonna start blowing out my lower lash line. So as you guys can see, I took that down pretty far because I love smoking out my lower lash line. I think it looks so pretty when it's kind of like heavy under there. I don't know why because I used to hate that look. And I used a different shade than I put on my lids just because I feel like it creates more of a dramatic look even though it's so simple. And I love the red tones. I feel like red tones really bring out blue eyes. So that's definitely my favorite shade to use on my lower lash and I just think it's stunning. And then I'm going to take a black eyeliner. I'm using the Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Crayon in the shade black. You don't have to use this one. This one was kind of expensive. Any black eyeliner from the drugstore will work to this, but I'm just lining my lower lash line with this. And then for my eyelashes, I'm using the House of Lashes Iconic Eyelashes. I'm absolutely obsessed with these lashes. I think they're my new favorite. So for my eyelash glue, I'm using the House of Lashes Adhesive. This is my favorite glue. While that glue dries, I'm going to do a coat of mascara on my lashes. Let my natural lashes match the fake lashes. I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sucks Mascara. And then your glue should look something about like this when it's ready. It just starts to get a little bit more clear. So I'm holding the eyelashes as close as I can to the band with my tweezers, if you guys can see that. And I'm holding them in the center of it. I press them on right in the center and that's all I worry about at first. Once that's on, everything gets easier. So then I'll go to the outer corner and press that side on. And then I go to the inner corner and do the same exact thing. And then I'll take my finger and just kind of lift them up. So as the glue is drying, I'm lifting them up so they're going to be like much more open and dramatic. And then once the glue dries, I'm taking my tweezers and then I press the fake lashes with my eyeshadow, with my eyelashes. Okay, so now that my lashes are on, I'm gonna put some mascara on my lower lashes and I'm using the Sephora Outrageous Curl Mascara. I love this mascara for doing the lower lashes. The applicator is tiny, like it's so teeny tiny and it just gets every single little eyelash so perfectly. So I'm just gonna do a little coat of mascara on them. And then to bronze my face a little bit, I'm using the MAC Gimme Sun Bronzer, the same thing that I put on my eyeshadow. And so I'm just very, very lightly dusting this all over, basically right over top of where I put that cream contour. And this is really just going to warm everything up. So if the contour shade that you use is a little bit too muddy or ashy, which sometimes it can look like that on me, especially if I'm really pale, this will help tremendously. It'll just kind of like correct any of that muddiness. And I'm also going to dust off all this bakage. 
So you can see we're left with like that perfect, super structured contour line, which I absolutely love. Now I'm gonna put some blush on my cheeks and I always switch off between these two. These are my two favorites at the moment. This is the Becca Wild Honey Blush and then the Too Faced Papa Don't Peach Blush. I'm just gonna use this one just because it's new because I can't decide. This one isn't very pigmented so you can go in and get like a lot on your brush and it's not gonna go on your face like crazy. And then I just like to put that right on the apples of my cheeks. Kind of like fling it backwards like towards the high points of my cheeks because you really want to blend all that in together. You want to blend the blush, the contour, and your highlight all together. So you guys can see that super pretty sheen that it gave my cheeks. It's almost like a super subtle highlighter, but I don't know, I just love it. I feel like it just looks so glowy and fresh. Then I'm gonna go in with a highlighter, and I always like to use a cream highlighter underneath my powder highlighter because I have a lot of texture on my skin. And I feel like when you're using a cream underneath, it takes away a lot of that look of the texture that you can have. So I'm using the Tarte Twinkle Stick. I've only used this one one time and I loved it so I'm gonna try it again today so I'm gonna take my beauty sponge again and just get a little bit on the tip of that and I'm just gonna pounce that right up and down on the very high points of my cheeks oh this is so pretty I'm so in love with this highlighter and then to set that cream highlighter, I'm using the Becca Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop Highlighter. Another one of my all-time favorites. I feel like this is the one highlighter that works for me when I'm like all skin tones, when I'm super pale, and when I'm really dark, which I'm pretty dark right now. And I'm just going to go right over top of that. And then I also take a little bit of that and put it in my inner corners. I'm using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Brush. And I just pop that right on my inner tear ducts. Using that same brush, put a little circle on the tip of my nose. And then a straight line going down the center. And I don't connect it to that. I do kind of like an exclamation point. And I just like doing this because I feel like it makes my nose look skinnier almost. Like more narrow without having to contour it. And then also doing my cupid as well. And then the last thing I highlight is my brow bone. I love highlighting my brow bone. I can never forget it. I feel like it makes such a difference in your eye makeup and it makes your eyebrows just look so much more like lifted. And then now to line my lips, I'm using Dolce K Lip Liner by Kylie Cosmetics. Then I'm using a liquid lipstick and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills lipstick in the shade Stripped. So now that that liquid lipstick dried down, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Gloss in the shade Undress. I'm just going to go right over top of that. And to keep my eyebrows in place, I'm setting them with the Benefit Ready Set Brow Gel. And then last but not least, to set everything and kind of morph all that powder and liquid foundation together, I'm going to be setting my face with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. It's my favorite setting spray. It keeps my makeup on so long, I feel like. Okay, so that completes this makeup look. I really hope you guys liked this video. It's a little bit different than something that I would normally do. I feel like I've talked a lot more and was a little bit more in depth for you guys. So let me know if you guys like that. I hope this video isn't too long because I know long videos can get a little bit boring. But anyways, if you aren't already, then please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.